Hello, welcome to Have A Go, and I'm Alan. Today we're going to start on the temporary headstock, which entails mathematics first of all. That is 1, 2, 7, that's 15.8. That is, we'll need to cut several lengths of stuff. First one being this much. So, time for the bandsaw. I've already cut the other parts, or the long parts. Just have to cut the tabs to go below this. And I just realised two per side so I need another two. The internal part of this here needs to be 6.35 so I measure it out. I finally found the use for this scrap off cut that I ruined. Sorry about that. Right. Now this one is roughly correct. So if I have them on a flat surface. Flat being a relative term here. Right, I've cut the lengths of angle iron I'll need, although these are aluminium, not actual angle iron, but hopefully we can make it work. The shorter length will be on the bottom, the upper length will be attached like this, and there will be two little clamps underneath like so that will clamp this onto the lathe bed. The goal of all these shenanigans with the angle iron and the clamps is to hold you know, one of these um, pillow bearing blocks onto the lathe bed with a shaft going between two of them so there will be a, another one on the opposite side and between them they will support a shaft going through them at the end of which will be a, bo a boring setup that we will use to bore this and yeah I'll end up using JB Weld on the top of it again most of it or the vast bulk of it will be sanded off scraped flat and then it will be, should be good. Although while I've got this, add those clamps there. Just going to judge the height a bit. Yeah, that should make that should work nicely. The bar will go through here, it will bore this out to the right diameter, and it should be good. Of course the bar stock, sorry, the rod stock hasn't arrived yet, but we'll make it work. Just going to measure the centre height of these blocks using the vernier calipers. The little marks there on the bearing itself. I'm going to turn this until this one here is perfectly horizontal and put it on a flat surface and measure from that mark to the flat surface to find the um, center height of this. Okay. 
it is about 31 and a half by I 33 so average them out it's about 32 millimeters for the center height let's measure how wide this actually is times 50 but 50.15 I don't know if me going drag with my old calipers through the mount or not, so I'm going to start be a good boy and use this scribe a lot more. Mark it in two places. I need two holes in here, centered 85.725 mil apart. The piece itself is about 115 mil long, 29.275, half that will be, I'll mark out this second one of the same size while I'm at it. Nothing special about this block, it's just a nice little bit of timber I keep around the jewel press to sh as a big shim or sacrificial um, drilling base if I have to. Hence why it has all these holes. The fact that their angle line makes these awkward to clamp, at least in my opinion. So I'm going to F clamp them to this and then hold, hold it while I drill through. It's only aluminium, it'll be dead soft so I should be okay. Sanity check. Yep. In hindsight, I wish I'd drilled the holes before I cut these. As it is, fixturing this is going to be annoying. Alright, hopefully that will work. I've got a small hoard of little wooden blocks next to my drill presses for just this purpose. Didn't bother for the aluminium but for the steel parts I will use cutting oil. Time. These days for aluminium I don't bother but for the steel I will use cutting oil and I'll also start off with the first tap. It's very different tapping aluminium to steel. With steel you can feel and hear the chips breaking as you cut them. Whereas with steel is a bit more like it's a bit like the difference between cutting hard bread and cutting cheese. And that's how that clamp will work. I'm doing them two at a time partly to help spread the load over the little vise which actually I believe makes it clamp better 
Post in the comments if I'm wrong about that, by the way. I did not expect that piece to suddenly come loose. Fortunately for me, not loose enough that it wandered. <laughs> when I think of how Maker Size tapped all his holes, very careful to hold the piece in the in a vice in the press, and he'd have the tap coming down in the press exactly vertical. And here I am going full redneck in the you know just crack crack crack. Mind you, his stuff looks a lot nicer than mine. The trick is remembering that you have the tools. B. I'm going to mark the bottom and the sides so, so I don't get confused. So I'm a simple man and I get confused easily. I'm working this out on my head as I'm going, folks. I'm going to make this 15mm in. It doesn't need to be precise, again, because... There will be adjustment built into this mechanism. The advantage of cutting these on the bandsaw is that these cuts are nice and straight and at right angles. If I'd done them myself with the hacksaw, then they would be yeah, crooked and not 90 degrees. Right, change this to 19.4. Right, the next hole is 76.2. I may need a wider block to actually drill these. Either that or shim them with another block. I want this to sit here and not here, so I'm using a block inside it. Block doesn't need to go the whole distance, just enough to give the clamp something to bite into. Quite liking these little F clamps. Nice thing about this one is that it's measured from the end for both of these holes. So I don't need to do any mathematics. Assuming I can hold the calipers. I don't need this shim this time since when I chuck it up or clamp it up the bolts drill will be right through the wood here not hanging off the side. Before I go any further I think I shall mark these with a T for top. Mark the set of letters. These holes are actually going to be the base of slots going out to the side, so... I'm terrible at this.
if I was good I wouldn't have these little jaggy bits Got that too soon. Next one is three eighths in. Nine point five. Before I go any further, I'll just mark these one and two so I know that which they paired up with. I don't just have letter punches, I have number punches. I'll mark the other pair with a two. Well, this needs to be on the opposite side to the other one. They're going to be mirror images, and these are five eighths from the top, which is fifteen point eight seven five millimeters. Now these will also require slots as well, so hopefully I can do a better job. Alright, that's all should be all the slots done. And that's how that mounts on. Now for the other side. Yeah. And that is how the temporary headstock is going to work. The bearings will go on here. And because there's slots there, they can go from there to about here. Forward and back. To get exactly the right yeah, distance in front of the back of the ways here. In front of the back of the ways. And I can also raise and lower this. At least I, once I filed out the slots a bit, I will. I can slide it along the lathe and tighten it up when I'm happy. Which at the moment I am happy. Now the bearing goes on the other side. And the cone pulley goes in the middle which will go to the counter shaft you, you saw me work on in a previous video. We'll put it this way, might make it a bit more obvious to you. And through, he, through there will go a boring bar with which we will bore the, heads, the permanent headstock. So, quite happy with that. I'm not going to bolt these down just yet because I'm about out of washers. We're now to tidy up. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.